Good morning, campers. Welcome back to Let's Really Go Sleeve Gold. Today's mission is undercover. I'm going to move pretty quickly through it because I'm operating on a bit of a time crunch, so let's go ahead and get started. Here we are at the end of Song of the Caverns. The briefing has been separately uploaded as always. Let's look at our objectives. Posing as a Hammerite novice, present your credentials to the guard at the gate and enter the Hammerite temple. Search the temple and discover where the talisman of air is kept. When you find it, take it. Oh, and while you're looting the place, steal the hammer's holy first hammer from their reliquary. In addition to stealing the talisman, steal 2400 worth of valuables while you're in the temple. Don't kill any of the Hammerites while you're on the job. Once you've achieved your other objectives, get out of the temple and back to the city streets. It's all pretty straightforward. The difference in this mission, obviously, is that unless we're in a forbidden area or get caught stealing something or messing with a guard, Hammerites don't alert to our presence. That makes it much easier. The second thing to notice is that the key to success in this mission is the order in which we do things. A lot of Hammerites stand perfectly still in one spot until we trigger a conversation and start their patrols. We can take advantage of that by doing things in a certain order to make things much easier. Finally, there's something present in this mission that also exists at places in Thief 2 and in Thief Deadly Shadows, but it's nowhere else inside this game, and that is... There's some pieces of loot that will trigger alerts if guards notice them missing, so we'll have to leave those until the end after the alarm has already sounded. There are five of those total, I'll point them out as I skip them. Anyway, it should be possible to Supreme Ghost this mission. Word is it's not possible to perfect thief it. I'll try for a little bit because the piece of loot you ostensibly have to skip isn't found until the very end of the mission, so I'll scout it out. I'll see whether I think it's possible or not, but if it's not, it's still possible to supreme ghost the mission by skipping only one piece of loot. So let's get started. As always, we purchase nothing. Now we're not going to go in through the front gate, not for any particular reason alert-wise, but if we take the alternate entrance, then we can avoid triggering some conversations and avoid starting some patrols. Let's look at a couple things first. Let's read this scroll. As approved by His Eminence, the High Priest Markander, we deliver unto you this novice under the standard agreement of service. The novice is sent with full status and training as such, and should serve with humility and vigor to the best of his skills. He will endure a standard three-year contract of service, at the end of which he will be considered for indoctrination as an elevated acolyte. The novice has been instructed in the rules and strictures of the order, has sworn his warrants to be silent in his vigils, and knows to maintain the marked privacies as indicated by the standard inverted red hammer sigil. Please remit periodic evaluations of his conduct, as warranted or at six-month intervals. May the hammer fall on the unrighteous. Officially, Brother Sackleman. Alright, let's look at the map. We've got a very nice detailed map here, prepared by RS, whoever that is. So, we're out in the streets, we see the front gate, then this chamber flanked by barracks on either side, central chamber, stairs leading down, two side passages, two balconies, library, main chapel, reliquary. On the lower floor, we have the priest's quarters, the stairs up to the first floor, storage room, a dining room, a sparring room, novices' quarters, a graveyard, a garden. The high priest, we think, is somewhere in here. Then in the basement, we've got storage, storage, kitchen, inquisitor. And then this location unknown are the crypts underneath the, underneath the cathedral proper. First thing we have to do, you saw in my first play, playthrough of this game, you have to mantle this. The, it's not that tough. The key is to be right in the center and to back up a little instead of being flush with the edge. And from the top of that frame, if you get just a little run up, you can mantle onto the brick wall here. Then from there to the top of the cathedral itself. Well, not quite. Then we want to mantle. So I need to do just a little bit better on my timing there, because what we want to do is grab onto that edge and mantle up like so. Perfect. Now we're in the garden. First thing we want to do is blow right past the garden in the novice quarters, 
Stay out of the room to the left. Don't trigger their conversation. Move through the sparring room here and head down into the crypts. At this point, there's almost no one moving around the level because we haven't triggered any conversations yet, which is what we want. So we're here in the in the underground crypt now. There is there are two guards, I think, one patroller and one stationary hammer. If I can find the stationary guy. Okay, yes, you see him there. The uh, up the slope in front of him is one of the pieces of loot that will cause an alarm if we take it. It's right in his view. There are five of those total, so we're going to have to skip that for now. But if we sneak up behind him, and we do have to sneak because he will react negatively to us swiping loot if he sees it happen. From behind him, we can get the vase behind him. Knowledge is our and then sneak we back down the slope. Let me make sure we're okay. We are. We can take this one with no consequence. That's 100 for a total of 200. With the scepter of righteousness has justice been forged. If thou wilt hearken to the designs the builder has made and keep his... They behave a little bit funny at the points where they would alert if we were, you know, not allowed to be here. But anyway, <clears throat> take this left. Down next to this coffin, there's a vase worth another hundred. Total of three hundred. We can also take this one with no consequence worth another hundred. Total four hundred. That's it for now. We've left one vase down here that we'll have to play with later. Oh, wrong way. So we go up these stairs. And we find ourselves in the basement, the storage area. go on up to the lower floor of the temple for now and enjoy the ability to make as much noise as we want and enjoy the fact that no one is patrolling these hallways right now which is pretty sweet so head straight here and then left into the dining room grab all three bottles of wine 50 each total 550 can be done with no consequence so we move through the kitchen. There's not really anything of import. There's a book to read. Terrence, we are almost done converting the old kitchens into the new treasury. All of the kitchen stores have now been moved up from downstairs, and some of the church valuables have been moved down. Work should be completed within the week. Nolman. There's some food in here, too, but we don't care about that. So. Up here, we move on up. Don't walk too far, because we don't want those two to start talking. Here's our first uh, restricted area, but we can slip in and out without... Oh. oh, it isn't locked. That makes sense. We should be able to slip in and out without alerting anyone. One guy is kind of facing this direction, so be careful of that. But as long as they're frozen... We shouldn't really have any problems. So in here, get the golden goblet off of the shelf. That's worth 25. Total, uh, 575. We also want that key. We'll return it later. Let's read the book. Hammerite Compendium of Precepts, Regimens, and Rules of Conduct, Volume 77. What is a tree but a tower that withers and dies? What is a pond but a cistern that stagnates and fills with muck? What is a patch of ground but a road which cracks and washes away? The chest just has food in it, so sneak out the same way. 
Should be good. Shut the door behind us. <coughs> and all remains well. Good, good, good. I don't even know why I'm crouched. We can run full speed without consequence. It's because crouching is such a habit, I suppose. Through that door, if you're interested, you can find a healing potion and another irrelevant copy of the silver key. We're gonna go ahead and tackle the high priest's chamber. Let's see where he is for now. He doesn't notice any of his loot missing, which is, you know, odd, but it is what it is. So you want the bottle of wine from his shelf, which is worth 50, brings your total to 625. Then the diamond from his chest, which is worth 100, brings your total to 725. When he's over here, slip into his study, grab the gray key, the gold hammer, and the bottle of wine and then blow right back out. Brings our total to 850, and need to listen, make sure we're still good with him. You'll notice I skipped the hammer. It makes supreming the mission easier because we don't actually need it to get the talisman of air. We can just jump across to it. We don't need to extend the happy bridge. Looks like all is well in Priestland. Good. This next forbidden room has a couple pieces of loot we want. A TR on the bookshelf brings our total to 975. The wine in the chest brings our total to 1,025. Gosh, isn't this easy with no patrollers at all? So now... We're going to leave this floor the way we came in. Down to the basement. Down to the tomb. And now all the way up to the sparring room. all the way back to where we came into the temple from the streets. Can, can in fact mantle to this wall if we get the jump just right. Ah, here we go some elevation. <sighs> Excellent. Now hop onto this balcony. And exit it to the south. to make sure not to enter the foyer. We need this to carry this papyrus with us for now. I am a wall builder. Let my walls endure from season to season, year to year, and age to age. Let my walls stand while families toil, armies march, and empires fall. I am a wall builder, and my walls will stand always as a shield against evil. This I pray that will the master builder grant. Seven Eleven was out of my favorite energy drink today, so I'm drinking a low-carb monster. It's pretty sucky, I'm not gonna lie. Hammerite Compendium of Precepts, Regimens, and Rules of Conduct, Volume 12. The Builder gave thou the raw stuff of thy life. Make thou a great work of it, or thou mockest his gifts. Okay. I don't 
think he should be patrolling it, but it doesn't matter much. That's the room we really don't want to go into yet. Because we don't want to trigger their conversation, so... Head through this door instead, after passing through that hallway. <coughs> now... We don't want to trigger the conversation in the graveyard below us, so if we stay flush with the wall, we should be okay. Need to move through this door into the library. Some reading material in here. Hammerite Compendium of Precepts, Regimens, and Rules of Conduct, Volume 36. Time once passed, the harlot did say to the priest, Tarry a while and wait upon thy duties, and the priest did tarry. And then was the harlot scourged with birch for branches, and was the priest crushed beneath the great gears, for the path of righteousness leads ever upwards to where it is perilous to fall. Temple authorization and access. Novices, as per the official books, are not permitted keys and are not allowed to enter restricted areas for any reason. These areas are to be designated by the standard red inverted hammer. Temple guardsmen are not permitted keys, but may enter restricted areas in pursuit of their function. Temple priests will be issued keys to most areas and are allowed in restricted rooms when authorized by the high priest. They are also, of course, allowed in their own quarters, but not in those of other priests. The high priest is granted the master key, has no restrictions to access, and will keep in his possession the holy symbol of the temple. Hammerite Compendium of Precepts, Regimens, and Rules of Conduct, Volume 108. Mortar cannot hold when the stone is not strong and clean. Before beginning thy endeavors, look to thy material, both physical and spiritual. Hammerite Compendium of Precepts, Regimens, and Rules of Conduct, Volume 94. Guard thy tongue from falsehood, as thou guardest thy purse from a jack-a-blade. Guard thy hand from misdeed, as thou guardest thy house from firelighters. Guard thy heart from doubt, as thou guardest thy tools from corrosion. For thy faith and thy tools are the best that thou hast. Hammerite Compendium of Precepts, Regimens, and Rules of Conduct, Volume 141. When the builder came amongst his children and asked, Who is it that has spoilt this work? Then didst his errant son answer, I do not know. Then didst the builder cast down his son and smite him with his hammer. For is it not known that a mistake may be mastered, but a lie lasteth forever on the tongue? Hammerite Compendium of Precepts, Regimens, and Rules of Conduct, Volume 53. To use thy chisel is to blunt its edge against the stone. To not use thy chisel is to waste its edge. Hammerite Compendium of Precepts, Regimens, and Rules of Conduct, Volume 2. When the thief did cry to the master, Release me, for I repent and shall do good all my days. Then did the master strike the thief's hand from him with a blade. And the master said, Go now and do good, for thy repentance has been paid. That, I think, is all the reading material here in this library. So we do have one active patroller, as I'm sure you noticed. So... Open that door, lock it behind us just to be safe. Grab the two bottles of wine, 50 each, bring our total to 1125. More reading! Hammerite Compendium of Precepts, Regimens, and Rules of Conduct, Volume 7. When the builder walks before thee and builds for thee a fortress, wilt thou go inside and shut the door, or wilt thou say, Yes, and now I shall raise one of mine own? Hammerite Compendium of Precepts, Regimens, and Rules of Conduct, Volume 199. A flaw in the gear will fade it to shatter. A flaw in the beam harbors the termite. A flaw in a man's righteousness encompasses his death. So, this chest unlocks with the High Priest's key. If we open it, there's just a scroll inside. The cage containing the talisman can only be opened when the five locks have been released. The lock releases are placed in various locations about this temple. One resides with Brother Mason. One is behind the skull of St. Yora. One is in the kitchen by the oven. One is behind the rack which loosens men's tongues. One is behind the keystone tree. The locks must be released within the span of five minutes. When all of the locks are released, the talisman cage can be opened. Then he who removes the talisman must first recite the prayer of the wall builder. So, with that knowledge in hand, we can, you know, basically leave the scroll where we found it. Close the door, close and lock the chest. Get out of this room the way we came in. Make sure we don't get caught. Lock the door behind us because the room is restricted.
Now, making sure to use exactly the same route so we don't trigger any other conversations. Listening carefully to make sure that's the case. We're gonna go ahead and return the silver key for Supreme. This one. See the patroller there. Fortunately, he doesn't care about us doing crazy things like leaping off balconies down in the gardens. <laughs> Except for the end. Undercover really functions as a sort of relaxing break from the stresses of the other missions, as far as I'm concerned, because it's just so easy. Until, of course, you grab the talisman and the alarm starts ringing. Now, one thing to note about uh, when we grab the talisman and the alarm rings, that doesn't qualify as a bust. Even though the alarm is sounding and everyone goes into search mode, Grabbing the talisman is directly required by an objective, and the IDOS forums have conceded that the act of grabbing the talisman doesn't bust a ghost. However, getting caught by any of the hunting guards after grabbing the talisman certainly would serve to bust our ghost, so keep that in mind when we reach that point. Same deal here as before. There shouldn't be anyone walking downstairs. We can drop this bad boy right back where we found it. Well, I certainly don't want to hover there in their visual range. And close that door behind us. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Now it's finally time to let these two guys start walking. Hast thought upon who is likely to succeed our master? Surely not for many years. Art thou blind? He is old, and the master forgers do jostle each other for precedence. I spy not on my betters, tis in the builder's hands. Tis true, tis true. <coughs> So we need those guys to start walking to get into the last two priest quarters. This one just has a purse in the chest, brings our total to 1225. Hammerite Compendium of Precepts, Regimens, and Rules of Conduct, Volume 113. A stroke of thy chisel once made canst not be undone, but a stroke thou dost not make from fear is a worse flaw. Be not cautious, be correct. Uh-oh. Okay. Obviously we've got to be... A bit more careful. Let's make sure he's not just going to spin right around. Well, apparently he is. Let's wait then. Till we have a clear shot at this room. Sup, bro? Maybe we should just shut the door behind us. Purse, 100, total 1225. Hammerite Compendium of Precepts, Regimens, and Rules of Conduct, Volume 113. A stroke of thy chisel once made canst not be undone, but a stroke thou dost not make from fear is a worse flaw. Be not cautious, be correct. Then we need to get into the room directly across from this one. As soon as we have an opportunity. That was not an opportunity. That still was not an opportunity. Seems he's got a bit of a hang-up on the wall there. Oh. Excuse me. Now we should be okay. Okay. I need to 
avoid that big staircase. So we still don't want to trigger the conversation upstairs. Squeak into this room. When no one's around. Another redundant silver key. And the chest, which I think we can... Does the key unlock it? It does. Good. Use the key to grab the purse. 100 brings our total to 1325. Relock the chest. Put the key back on the table. Excellent. All right. That's worth a real save. Let's get out of this room. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and do the switch puzzle now. We're gonna walk into this graveyard and it's gonna trigger a conversation between two hammers who will then start patrolling. Some do say the Baron means to raise the tariffs again, even on greens and meat. The wretched man serves only the merchants in his own greed. His grandfather cared less for his pocketed gold and more for his soul's health, but no longer. The builder's truth it is that men without belief do soften and fail as rotten wood. Now, we're not allowed inside these tombs, so... Here lies Father Thiel, a teacher without peer, yet ever a student of discipline. Here lies Brother Terence, he fought the unrighteous to his last breath. Here lies the unhappy Brother Dale, buried here as a symbol of lessons not learned. Here lies Brother Mason, truest of scholars. Here lies Brother Wainwright, may his wheels turn forever in the hereafter. So, oddly enough, if you nab this vase, no one will notice it missing. So that's 100, brings our total to 1425. These next two... The hammers will notice if they're gone and sound the alarm. So with these two, you can grab these vases no problem. Another hundred brings our total to 1525. Another hundred brings our total to 1625. And we're going to wait for him to come back in here and leave because we're going to start flipping switches in uh, Brother Mason's little crypt. Alrighty. Also worth a real save, I think, the start of the switch puzzle. So, now we have five minutes to get to all four other switches. So just blaze right back through the sparring room. <clears throat> Make sure there's no reading material in here either. Okay, good, there's not. It's kind of hard. I always had trouble figuring out what the hell the keystone tree was, but the switch is right there. That's two. Now we're going to hop up on the balcony, same as before. This door. Oh, Garrett. Garrett got stuck. So... Come on. Come on. I don't want to waste any time if I can help it. I may be getting a little hyperactive. Five minutes is a actually a long time. Now, onto the balcony. Through here into the reliquary. You see one stationary <laughs> hammer. Let's go ahead and read everything while we're here. The sacred skull of Saint Yora, a builder of vision and devout keeper of the faith. The first hammer, <laughs> symbol of our ascent from the trickster's shadow. And the forge's child. This hammer was the first to be cast out of a mold. It was brought into the world by Father Tenor, now sainted. So, we just need to make sure he doesn't alert when we flip that third switch. Very good, he didn't. Now, we're 
we're gonna have to get the first hammer later. They do notice and sound the alarm if it goes missing. So, back down to the tombs once again. Right up here. Now here's the torture chamber. Creep carefully across the metal. Because this area is restricted and the Inquisitor is sleeping in the next room. So we just need to get over to the rack and hit the fourth switch. Now we need to sneak through the Inquisitor's room. Uh-oh. I can't let this guy see us. I'm gonna wait till I hear him go by. In the meantime, we can sneak, o sneak across the tile over to this desk. We can grab the silver coins worth 12, total 1637, read another book. Hammerite Compendium of Precepts, Regimens, and Rules of Conduct, Volume 199. A flaw in the gear will fade it to shatter. A flaw in the beam harbors the termite. A flaw in a man's righteousness encompasses his death. So now we got to sneak back out. This is an area we're allowed to be in, which is good. Ready the high priest's key, and make sure he's not facing you when you open and shut this door to the old kitchen slash treasury. Over here is the fifth switch. That time, that funky sound means that we're set. So the switch puzzle is now solved, so let's loot the treasury. You see buco coinage here. There are 15 coppers. There are, I think, eight each, silver and gold. And then inside the chests are a diamond, a purse, and a purse. Which brings our grand loot total to 2308. Awesome. So, wait until you hear the Hammerite patrol passed. Well, maybe. This is not our... Yeah, okay, he's... Closer than he sounded, so just wait for him to go by, then relock the door behind us. We're going to <clears throat> track back to the high priest's room and go ahead and put his key back. a bit more complicated this time because now there are some patrollers outside we need to watch out for as well as the priest himself. So we need to wait for him to be off to the right because the key was on his desk. He should move. Looks like he's stuck. There he goes. Good. Of course, now this guy's coming at us. Perfect timing, sir. I mean, really, that's just splendid. Splendid. Okay, good. Maybe we can make it now. Well, maybe not. 
This was much easier with no patrollers, I have to say. Okay, let's try it. Stand here and listen. Make sure all is well. All right, good. <clears throat> okay. We are ready to set the alarm. Now this is where we skipped grabbing the holy symbol from the high priest's room. So we just have to leap across, no problem there. Flip this switch. There's no way to reclose this gate, so we don't have to worry about that. Now, get ready with a real save, because we are about to trip the alarm. Oh, well, I guess we have to get a little closer. There it is! So grab the talisman, and reclose the gate. Now things get fun! <clears throat> first things first, we want to drop down to this level without an alert. Or, without damage. Now the fact that the alarm is ringing isn't a bust, but we can't get caught. Let's keep that in mind. Sneak down into the tomb. The first thing we're going to do is grab the vase we skipped. The guards become completely unpredictable once the alarm sounds. Really all you can do is watch, be careful, little trial and error will definitely be involved in getting through here without getting caught. The alarm makes everybody extremely sensitive, too. Alright, there's the vase. Worth 100 brings our total to 2408. You never want to save outside a perfect shadow once the alarm rings. Reason being, what would... A detection that would normally cause a first alert will instead cause them to bash your face in with a hammer. Now I want to get back to the stairs which lead to the sparring room. Which are right up here. See, this is complicated and very difficult. By far the hardest thing we're going to have to do. I want to get to the garden. Come forth and fight me, villain! Very good. I chose those shadows just because they're much easier to get to. Let's get these two vases now. 100 each. Brings our total to 2608. Whew! 
Let's get back across the same room again. We've gotten extremely lucky there in the sparring room. <sighs> Holy crap! There's a guy standing in the bush. I didn't even see him. Well, damn. That might complicate matters. Considerably. Thou canst not stay in shadows forever. Looks like he can't see me from his position inside that bush. can't even tell what he's up to. Anyway, we're in a good shadow here, so... <clears throat> Get into the reliquary. Grab the first hammer. Which we need to take with us for an objective. Nab the stone hammer. Amazingly, the reliquary is now unguarded. Oh, crud. Is this a good shadow? No. Let's make a real save here. Cease thy hiding, Raven. Because I'd like to be able to use quick saves to try and get into that chapel. There are only two pieces of loot left once we get the stone hammer, which we have to grab for an objective. So. I 
I shall spy thee ere long, thee. Cease thy games and face me! Our strength and resolve. Tis not what it once was. We need that hammer. The hammer's worth 75, it brings our total to 2683. Shut not hide forever. Thou shalt not escape me. Cease thy games and face me. Cease thy games and face me! I'm gonna go ahead and open the door to the reliquary to give myself some hard cover from the foyer. Thou shalt not escape me! Okay, well he spotted me. Obviously. I think he did too. Thou shalt not hide forever. Ah! Dang it. Wait, is he gonna leave? That would make things Cease easier. Thy hiding, the builder shall Raven. guide me to thee. I shall spy thee along. Good, good, good. Now we need to put back the uh, prayer of the wall builder. Which is hard because it's in plain sight of the foyer. But we do what we can. That actually wasn't so bad. Now! The last piece of loot, the one that everyone says you can't get, is another gold hammer just inside the main entrance. Let's go, uh... Let's go survey the disposition there. Obviously that didn't work, but... I'm here. That was your last I'm here to check Novices things are not out. Permitted here, brother. Best to thou depart before the Cease 
cast thy gains and face me. Those guys seem to be tracking me pretty thoroughly. Swing, brother! Swing! Look at that, would you? Oh, that's that's a sight to see. Still think our best bet is to try and get into that shadow. <laughs> but you can see how sensitive they've become. We got into a shadow. That makes the me much more comfortable. The builder shall guide me to thee. Do not think thou shalt stay. I can just manage that little sprint when everyone's back is turned. <laughs> I think the way the alarm works is that when search mode would normally end, the alarm 
immediately puts them back into search mode. I think that's what all those little hop steps are. They're the moment when he would be giving up, where he is then put back into Thou search mode. Cease thy games and face me. Not think thou shalt stay. Thou shalt not hide forever. Thou shalt not hide forever. Anyway, <clears throat> it should be obvious that if you're so inclined, you can just skip the gold hammer, hop into the streets from the balcony, and be done with it which I may still end up having to do. We'll see. But I think this is possible. If we can just make this little run... We can get a second and a half window where everyone's back is turned. Thou shalt not hide forever. I shall spy thee ere long, thee. Thou shalt not hide forever. Cease thy games and... The Builder shall guide me to thee! Uh-oh. Oh good, I was going to say, I can't have him coming too far this way. That's bad mojo. Well, 
that little move gave me two things. Gave me a shorter run, which I want, but robbed me of the ability to actually watch the dudes. And one did see me. For a second there, I really thought I had it. Killing me. Cease thy games and face me. Ha ha! Thou shalt not escape me. There's the next step. Thou shalt not hide forever. Cease thy games and face me. Cease thy hiding. Cease thy games and face me. Now if we can at some point find both of their backs turned, we should be able to nab that hammer. Cease thy hiding. I shall Raven. find thee and crush thee. and crush thee. What if I come from the other side? I shall find thee and crush thee. Cease thy hiding, craven. Novices are not permitted here, brother. It's best that thou depart before the master forces take note. Okay, he saw me. Now depart before the master forges take note. Okay, we've got the last piece of loot. Now find the encrusty. Cease thy hiding. Now we just need to get out. Which will require The builder shall guide me to thee. Another successful execution of this move. That should be easier if we're just, you know, angling sideways the into the hallway. Can't forget that little detail. Okay, yeah, I did get one guy after me just then. I 
I knew something that was after me. Cease thy games and face me. I shall find thee and crush thee. Thou shalt not escape me. I don't hear any runners. With that, the actual escape is just that easy. Alright, everybody, that's Perfect Thief in Undercover. Um, I think it might even be Perfect Supreme. I did... I just... It's impossible to tell after the alarm goes off, but... I didn't think I triggered any alerts because the hammers come and crush your face with their hammer if they first alert after the alarm goes off and everything was left as I found it so I think I proved Clatramus wrong because there is a shadow in the front hall behind the stand where the hammer is and just managed to perfect thief undercover perfect supreme thief undercover even anyway like I said fun little excursion Gets exciting at the end, pretty boring before that, easy mission overall. Total time, 44 minutes, 11 seconds, found 2758 loot out of 2758. Zero locks picked, no backstabs, no knockouts, no damage dealt or taken, no healing taken, nothing and no one killed. Campaign so far, 27 hours, 15 minutes, 23 seconds, 28,024 loot, total damage dealt, 20, the training mission. That's finally going to change at the end of the next level and received zero and I really believe that was a perfect supreme run I'll probably be proven wrong when I watch the video later but I'll make my ending save and I will sign off see y'all later bye bye